Colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death here in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. It's one of the most preventable forms of cancer. Dr. Doug Rosen from Novant Health is here with me this morning to talk about preventing your risk. And let's start there. What are risk factors for colon cancer? Uh, risk factors really uh, revolve around a family history of colon cancer okay. in first or second degree relatives, so that's parents or siblings or even grandparents, okay. um, and then other uh, medical diseases that predispose to colon cancer, inflammatory conditions and poly polyp conditions. Obviously, you can't change your family history, but are there some other things you can do to reduce your risk? Certainly a healthy diet, uh, mostly plant-based and lower in animal proteins and fats and exercise and avoiding a sedentary lifestyle. Mm. Most people don't really know the specifics about colon cancer, but they have an idea of what testing for colon cancer looks like. Does that tend to prevent people from even starting the process or even having the conversation? Uh, some, there are some misconceptions about colonoscopy okay. that it can be uncomfortable. Uh, some people are frightened of the procedure. Sure. But generally when we have a conversation with the patients and explain it to them, uh, explain that they're going to be sedated and explain that the preparation the day before has improved over the past several years uh, and compare that with the concern of developing colon cancer and undergoing surgery and chemotherapy, it makes a lot more sense to be preventive. And screening is really key. Screening is absolutely the most important thing. So we recommend beginning screening colonoscopy at age 50 or earlier if you have family history or other risk factors. Okay, now talk about the kind of rubric that you guys use for family history for people who have family history. So generally, uh, for a family history of colon cancer, we want you to begin screening colonoscopy 10 years before the affected family member developed their diagnosis. So if they began, if they were diagnosed at age 40, you would actually start at age 30. Uh, mm -hmm. If they were diagnosed older, we would start at age 40 instead of age 50. Now, are there any long-term effects after having a colonoscopy? Colonoscopy is a uh, same-day procedure, so you come in for the procedure in the morning, uh, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to do the procedure. You're in the recovery room for about 15 minutes and then you go home. That day, you're limited activity because of the residual effects of the sedation. The following day, you're back to your regular routine. All right. So for people who might be considering it, is there something they need to be looking for in terms of how they feel or is it just something you need to do? Certainly, if there are any symptoms such as blood in the stool or significant alterations in your bowel habits, uh, that would be an indication to go ahead and proceed with colonoscopy prior to age 50. Okay. And you should speak to your primary care physician about you that. You often hear about colon cleansing as well. Does that help reduce risk? No. I'll do uh, the two go hand. It just came to my mind, but you, you hear people talking about colon cleansing. Do either of them go hand in hand? Uh, colon cleansing is something that we have to do before colonoscopy in order to be able to see inside sure. the colon. But the practice of uh, enemas and colon cleansing per se is not something that we generally recommend apart from a high fiber diet which promotes better bowel motility and better bowel function. All right, Doc, appreciate the time. Thanks for coming in. Good information, folks. You can get more information on our web channel, wccbcharlotte.com.